thank you for being here. Uh, we have an exciting announcement that we're going to make in just a couple moments, but I wanted to uh, take a minute to introduce uh, some of the folks who are here. Uh, we, of course, have Mayor Moreau Weinberger, pleased to have the mayor with us. Uh, we have here uh, Commissioner Scott Moody, Chair of our Electric Commission. We have City Councilor Hannah King, Board 8. We have Commissioner John Bailing from the Department of Environmental Conservation with the State of Vermont and joined by Lee Martin and Deidre Ritzer. Uh, we have the BED team. Uh, we're, we're pleased to, to be joined by so many colleagues here uh, for uh, what is going to be an exciting announcement. And I think we're going to wait just a second here. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, but we'll, we'll want to be uh, giving some room because here comes uh, the subject of the announcement. <laughs> Rolling right in here. That noise. Joined here by Kieran Canavan, who is our line worker. We're going to be driving this truck. Thank you. Thanks, Kieran. So obviously, we're here today because behind us here is the first all-electric line crew bucket truck uh, in the state of Vermont, and about to go into service right here in Burlington, uh, thanks to a partnership between the city and Burlington Electric, the state of Vermont and uh, with support uh, from the BED team in the community, we're really excited to, to roll out this truck behind us. Uh, I'm gonna give just a little information contextually about it, and then we're gonna hear from uh, some of our other speakers. Uh, I wanted to note that uh, a couple of years ago, our line crew uh, actually came to me and said, hey, we wanna replace our uh, tools that are fossil fuel powered on our bucket trucks with electric versions. We're talking about pole saws, chainsaws. Uh, and I couldn't have been more excited to hear that uh, because we have our net zero energy goal here in Burlington. Uh, at Burlington Electric, we're trying to electrify everything that we can. And to know that our team uh, that's out there working in the community to keep the grid uh, working, to keep the lights on, is thinking about this uh, as well and having innovative ideas uh, was really gratifying. So we've made that investment. We've been in, uh, replacing our, our saws and, and chainsaws, buckets, uh, pole saws with electric versions. And now we have the opportunity to replace one of our diesel trucks uh, with an electric truck. And what that's gonna mean is uh, we have a vehicle here that is a 210 kilowatt hour battery uh, for propulsion. It's gonna get this vehicle around 115 miles of range. Uh, we think about the community and what the bucket truck's doing. It's typically out in the community driving, you know, a number of miles, but not, not typically 100 in a day, uh, much less than that. Uh, when it's idling, there's no more idling. Uh, it's going to be 100% electric, uh, so we're saving all kinds of fuel in terms of that. Uh, it has a 36 kWh uh, battery that is, or sorry, a 36 kW charger that's going to charge that 210 kilowatt hour battery. It's going to take around, you know, six hours, seven hours. Uh, so we'll be charging it up overnight uh, during off-peak times. Uh, it also has, for the bucket and the other systems, a separate battery. Um, that is charging using a level two charger like you would use for your electric vehicle uh, at home. And so all the systems here are electric. They're all gonna be charged off of BED's 100% renewable electricity, uh, which we're excited about. And uh, the other thing that's kind of unique here is uh, we think about large vehicle electrification. Uh, we've been electrifying lawn mowers, uh, commercial mowers in the city. We've been electrifying sedans and even SUVs. This is a big vehicle. Uh, this is a vehicle that, that weighs a lot, that's, that's you know, really doing a lot of heavy duty work in the community. And if we can electrify this, there's all sorts of other opportunities that we're hopefully gonna be able to pursue. Uh, but we have to demonstrate the technology and that's what the exciting thing here is, is we're gonna be able to put this truck to work very soon. Folks are gonna see it around the community, unique uh, in its wrap. It's got a Net Zero <laughs> Energy logo on the hood. It's wrapped in the, uh, the white and green, a little different than the traditional orange. And we're gonna be able to report out to other utilities, to the community, to the state, how's it doing, how's it working, what improvements can we make as we move from what is cutting edge first generation technology to second and third and fourth generation as we go. Uh, so we're really excited, we're grateful for y'all to be here today. I'm gonna to turn it over to the mayor for some remarks. 
Thanks, Thanks there. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining us, being part of this exciting announcement. We're excited to have partners from the, the state and city council here as well. Um, this is, uh, as hopefully everyone in the room knows, really Burlington's been moving aggressively to move forward and electrify everything and reduce our carbon emissions as quickly as possible. Um, this is a goal we have for the city, the city team, city vehicles and buildings. It's a goal we have for the whole community. The um, we try to do this across the board, as Darren described, but it's not something just at BED. I think it's important for, for everyone to know citywide when we have a vehicle or other piece of equipment that is coming to it, the end of its useful life, we are reviewing and whenever possible making a decision to electrify it. We've done that not just here in BED, but also in the police department, the fire department, the traffic team, and more. Um, the Parks Department has lawnmowers that are electric and, and has been using them for years, string trimmers, chainsaws. We even have an electric sweet, uh, street sweeper for the airport, and I'm pretty sure we have an electric Zamboni, is yes. right? Yes. Um, and uh, however, there has been a um, limit to what we have been able to electrify up until now when it comes to our heavy duty vehicles and heavy duty tr trucks. And we are very excited to today be announcing what is easily the most awesome technology in our electric fleet, Vermont's first all electric bucket truck. The, um, this would not have been possible without the integral funding support that we received from the state of Vermont. Um, and uh, it's also not, we're not even possible without the support of, of the Burlington Electric Commission. We're going to hear from Scott Moody in a moment, which has for many years been a strong backer of this, um, uh, this uh, electrification uh, strategy. And our hope in, with an announcement like today uh, is that when people see that it is possible to electrify something even as large as one of the city's largest pieces of equipment. It really makes all Burlington residents, business owners think uh, that we are, we're in, a new, we're in a new era here. We're in a new time when it is possible to electrify and power with Burlington's 100% renewable electricity, just about any piece of equipment. And uh, we hope to be a partner to Burlington residents and businesses in doing that um, thousands and thousands of times in the future as we uh, as we move forward with this ag aggressive effort to um, combat climate change through electrifying everything. So uh, thank you again, everyone, for being here. And with that, I'll hand it back to you, Darren. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Uh, we're going to hear next uh, from the commissioner, and I want to just reiterate our thanks uh, to the state for the grant funding that made this possible and the partnership uh, to the administration. We couldn't have done it without them. And so, Commissioner, thank you very much. Thank you. And Good afternoon. Uh, glad to be here. One, one thing I want to know, when my son was 10, I don't think you would have got him out of this truck. So I, I, hope, you, I hope you bring it to some elementary schools. That's a great, great looking piece of machinery. Um, one of the things I want to touch on, obviously this is great for climate change. I really applaud the city's efforts in, in this regard. The electrification of vehicles is huge for Vermont. You know, the majority of Vermont's greenhouse gas emissions come from transportation. So this is where we're going to get it done. There's another piece of this that I don't think is as... Um, uh, prevalent, which has to do with, with uh, other pollutants that are caused by diesel. So the reason we had the money to, to give uh, to Burlington Electric in this case, it came from a settlement with the Volkswagen Corporation. Some of you may remember this. In, in 2015, they admitted that they had tinkered with the software in about a half a million vehicles to have it defeat emissions controls. So think about if they had put that kind of effort into actually reducing emissions, where we'd be, but they put it into cheating. But it did result in a massive settlement with a number of states. The state of Vermont's uh, portion of that settlement came to $18.7 million. We administered that to something called the Emergency Mediation Trust. Did I get that right? Environmental Mitigation Trust, sorry. Um, and my colleagues here, Deirdre Ritzer and Lee Martin, are largely responsible for distributing those funds. And we've used it for a bunch of different projects. I was with them last fall at the first trash truck in Vermont. That's all, all electric. Uh, we had a, a major uh, school bus project, and a bunch of those buses were here in Chittenden County. So we're making this move, we're making this transition towards electrification of all vehicles, but particularly these heavy duty vehicles. 
And that's very important. So the, the emissions control defeat devices, what it, what it amounted to was they were selling cars that were emitting nitri nitrogen oxides, which we call NOx, 40 times the state level, right? By, by cheating and, and defeating the systems, they were, they were putting 40 times the amount of NOx into the atmosphere that they should be. NOx is a highly reactive chemical. It has direct health effects. It triggers asthma, it worsens asthma. It also has a, an interactive effect with things called PM25, which is small particulate matter, and with ozone. And what this, the impact of that is, especially in cities like Burlington, is it increases childhood asthma, it's a major impact on the elderly, and on disadvantaged populations all across the country. So it's, it's very important that we start replacing the traditional diesel vehicles with these electric vehicles. So I'm really happy to be here today. I'm glad you're doing this. Keep up the good work, and thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Um, next, we're going to hear from City Councilor Hannah King, and, and we appreciate as well the City Council's support uh, for this project. So, City Councilor King, thank you. Sorry, I have to do the open the phone thing. Um, what an exciting day. The transition from fossil fuels to electric energy is a crucial part of addressing climate change. This summer we've experienced catastrophic and historic flooding, smoke from wildfires, and closed beaches. Climate change is here, and we need everyone to be working towards a more sustainable energy future. This all-electric bucket truck sets an example that transcends city limits and signifies more than a technological advancement. It's a statement of intent. Today is yet, ag yet again another example of Burlington's ability to be a leader on our climate and net zero goals. Thank you to the state of Vermont, the entire Burlington Electric team, and the mayor for making today possible. Thank you. And last but not least in our speaker lineup uh, is our line worker, Kieran Canavan, who is going to be driving this truck around the community uh, and who, I, I should mention, does a really great uh, job with something we call Power Town, which is a little uh, safety exhibit that we have where school groups can come in and learn about all the ways to keep safe. And I'm excited that in the next iteration of that, that the students who come in and, and see the truck bay here and see Power Town uh, might be able to see this truck as well. So, Kieran, take it away. Thank you. Um, I'm really excited about this addition to our fleet. Um, I still can't go, get over how quiet and smooth it is driving around. It's kind of a surreal experience for uh, such a large vehicle. Um, but I'm really uh, um, happy and proud to be one of the individuals um, demonstrating this technology in Burlington. And I think it's going to be a great uh, teaching tool when we're out interacting with the public. Thank you. Thanks, Kieran. So I think with that, uh, we'd be glad to take any questions folks have. So is the future idea, you know, if there's a big storm, you know, it might exhaust its range. So having to charge it for six hours would be a little prohibitive. Do you, in the future, do you imagine to have several trucks and you know, one will constantly be charging ready to go? Yeah, so I think for, for storm coverage in Burlington, I think we're going to be good with this truck and, and with the remainder of our fleet. Uh, one thing that I've been thinking about is, you know, we do mutual aid uh, where we send a truck outside of Burlington to help with storm uh, and, you know, recovery. Uh, sometimes we do that in Vermont. Some occasionally we do it outside of Vermont. Um, right now, I don't think we would send this vehicle on a mutual aid trip, particularly outside of Vermont. Um, my hope is in the future, range is improved. Uh, charging infrastructure is more uh, available and that there's options where we could have a vehicle like this that would be able to go on mutual aid. Uh, so this vehicle is primarily going to be servicing the city, uh, and it's a great vehicle to do that. Um, but my hope is, as the technology advances, we'll have that capability as well to, to think about sending an all-electric bucket truck on a mutual aid trip. What about down the line, a truck that can then put some energy back into the grid as it's driving around? Is it <coughs> capable, or are we going to wait? No, it's a great question. Um, you know, we're not contemplating that initially with this vehicle, but you think about, you know, I said 210 kilowatt hour battery. That's, uh, that's a significant battery. Um, that's, that's roughly double what a typical EV would have um, for propulsion. Um, so if there were opportunities in the future to install the type of charging infrastructure you would need where it's, it's bi-directional, uh, you could envision a scenario where a truck like this might be able to contribute uh, to peak demand needs. Um, you know, Ford does that with the F-150 Lightning. You have to buy a special charger. Uh, there's other uh, OEMs that are looking at that technology as well. So 
that could be exciting and not just for this vehicle. We think about, you know, we have electric transit buses in Burlington and we hope to have more of those. Um, as we get more large vehicle electrification, you could start to think about those batteries as being uh, two-way batteries that are available to the grid in certain circumstances as well. So definitely on deck for, for future consideration. And what's the timeline on getting a second? <laughs> well, I don't know, Commissioner. Uh, <laughs> we, um, so I, I think I should mention, too, as part of this grant, uh, we have a conventional vehicle that we decommission and take out of service. Um, you know, we try to run a reasonable uh, investment schedule for our bucket trucks and for our fleet as a whole. Um, I think we'll want to get a little bit of experience with this one uh, before we, you know, purchase a replacement vehicle again. We'll probably have hopefully a year or two of experience under our belts. And uh, we're going to want to monitor the technology because I think just like we've seen with EVs where, you know, we have a Nissan Leaf out here that we bought uh, for BED back in 2013 that has less than 100 miles of range. And we have a Chevy Bolt that we bought in 2017 that has like 250 miles of range. So I think, you know, by being an early adopter, we're, we're driving the market and that's important. Uh, but I'm hopeful that we'll be able to look at this next time and the range is going to be, you know, bigger. Um, the efficiency will be even stronger. So uh, we're excited. We, when we replace a vehicle, as the mayor said, um, every single time we're going to be looking for electric technology. Um, so we're going to be looking at that with the bucket trucks, with our own fleet, uh, with the lawnmowers, uh, with everything at BED and really, I think, within the city, too. Yeah. So I don't have a specific timeline for the next bucket truck, um, but hopefully within the next couple of years, we'll be able to add another one. State funding would be helpful too, but I don't want to speak for the state. And uh, federal funding might be available as well. So, what did the, the Burlington uh, Electric Commission think about this? Was there anything controversial about this project? Or too expensive or reliability? Was, it, was the commission behind you 100%? Or I don't know if I want to maybe put our commission uh, chair on the spot here. If he's willing. Uh, no, not at all. I mean, I mean, I, I think I would reiterate uh, what the rest of the speakers uh, have said. In that, uh, I mean, this is just a, a marvel of technology, and we're we're behind it 100 percent, and uh, looking forward to it uh, with uh, Kiranda here as, as a teaching tool, and uh, hopefully as an inspiration to uh, the people of the city of Burlington as we as we electrify <coughs> the fleet all the way around the city. Hopefully, be, you know, this thing, this behemoth here, serves as as an inspiration. We're we're 100 percent behind it, and very proud of it today. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. I, I should mention too that. This vehicle with the state support cost Burlington Electric less than what a traditional diesel vehicle would have cost. Um, so not even counting on the operating savings from electricity uh, as a transportation fuel being you know, cheaper in many cases than conventional gasoline. Um, the capital investment here was less than what we would have had to put forward. So this was strongly supported, I think, by the commission and council uh, all the way through. If I remember correctly, uh, and Michael, correct me if not, I believe it was seven hundred twenty-two thousand, roughly. Is that? That includes the transportation to get here. Seven eighteen right. and change. Yeah. Seven twenty-two with the transportation costs to get here. Right. And what's a normal bucket? I think you're gonna be looking at you know more roughly like half of that cost, or maybe a little less than half, uh, depending on you know which vehicle you're getting. So there there was a premium here. The grant funding helped offset the premium. Hopefully, as the technology evolves, the premium will be less as well. Any other questions we can answer? If not, I think, Mike, am I correct that we're going to do a little bucket demonstration? Right. Kieran <laughs> is going to take it outside and pick it up. All right. Thanks, everybody, and we'll, we'll look forward to seeing that happen right now. Level three charger charges the truck. Level two charges the other equipment. Suiting up over here.
suspension adjusting for the level, but other than it being amazingly quiet, it operates just the same as a regular bucket truck. Um, battery powers hydraulics, runs the booms, and uh, and the outriggers and everything. So, but I'll go up and uh, give you a demonstration. Thanks, you're on.